What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Real Cowboys fans stand up. And yo, tonight we're going to talk about one of the last undrafted free agent prospects that we're going to break down on this channel. And that's Earl Bostic Jr. out of the University of Kansas. So for those of you who are new to the channel and might not know, I cover the Kansas Jayhawks. So throughout the college football season, you'll see me in the press box talking a lot of Kansas football on the radio. But Earl, big girl, he was one of my favorite players on Coach Leipold's roster, man. He's a good kid, very high IQ, you know, very solid player as well. But he's 6'6", 309 pounds, a little bit on the lighter side. I think the reason why he slid out of the draft, he doesn't have the greatest hand size and his arm length is kind of small. So we know that scouts do like measurables, but he was a former tight end. So when he came to KU, he was recruited as a tight end. But in the 12 games he played this past season as a fifth year senior, you know, he only allowed one quarter quarterback hit and only one sack allowed so you know KU had a lot of different changes um, at the quarterback position especially when Jalen Daniels went down but Earl was one of the constants when it came to the offense of the Kansas Jayhawks so let's go ahead and get into the film so in the play, you'll see him lined up at left tackle now. I know the question a lot of you are asking, Tuck, can he play guard? Can he play guard? I don't think he's going to be a converted tackle to guard. I feel like if he's going to earn a check at the NFL level, he's going to be a swing tackle, playing left tackle, and also right tackle. But on this play right here, he's lined up versus Will Anderson. Yeah, I know a lot of people, not Will Anderson, Will McDonald, my bad. Will McDonald, uh, this is my guy, Vach Lombardi's guy. I was high on him as well out of Iowa State. You'll see him there, good lateral movement, getting his hand placement. Now you see him like, damn, Tuck, he just got bullied. He didn't get bullied, man. There's a lot of garbage that he tripped over, right? So let's watch it from the end zone angle here. Big 68 versus Will McDonald. MJ Anderson on the other side, so I, I meshed them two, right? Movement, got his head across, solid, moving lateral, then he just tripped. That's scary. It's always scary for you. A big, be a big elephant, man. People fall on your legs and fall on your knees right there. But just look at the movement. He's very light on his feet. Gets his head across to reach to the outside. Boom. Good hands. Good feet. Then just that happens, right? So he's, he's very quick on his feet, man. That's the one thing I do like about him. So um, he gets off the ball quickly, has a good kick step, good anchor very technically sound now he's going to be more your quote-unquote pass pro type of tackle right so you'll see here again him versus will mcdonald on the left side little horizontal step hands now i feel like that's going to be his struggle right i feel like his struggle is going to be against um, you know, those kind of smaller edge rushers, they have a, a great bend that can dip and do a lot of different things, and especially combat with their hands. So at the NFL level, you're going to see that a lot. But like I said, you know, what did Will McDonald go? I think he went like 15 to the Jets or something like that. So this is a quality prospect he's going against, and he's di he's doing battle. And he held a little bit. I'm not going to lie. He held a little bit, right? But just watch his step. Hands, hands on the outside a little bit around his throat you see will mcdonald now will mcdonald had a complete toolbox right you see that rip there hand around the throat but man i don't know this referee this referee right here said hey, i ain't see it man i ain't seen nothing going on you know what i'm saying so you know me personally i would probably call that but boom hands on the outside so he can clean that up a little bit he's getting ripped but he stays engaged so all right so here See him once again kick, good anchor. Now he gets drove back a little bit on the bull rush, right? It's like I said, the one thing that like I guess it really kind of kind of hurt him is just not having that arm length. As we always see on this channel, right? The first of the chest wins. And so, you know, at the NFL level, you got some freaks like Tyree Wilson, for instance, right? That went to the Raiders, like just has those pterodactyl like arms. So once they're able to get control of your, your chest plate you pretty much lose all your leverage so that's where you have to have a strong base and he does have a strong base so he's built like your old school squatty or tackle but he can definitely move has good solid feet work as well Let's watch it from this end zone angle once again his hands are on the outside so i like to see those hands just get inside a little bit right because you know he put the dallas Cowboys star on his helmet they're going to call that nine out of ten times hell it might be ten out of ten but good wide comfortable stance boom feet moving 
Let's clean, clean up those hand placement a little bit. Now, if you watch the Brian Schottenheimer video, of course, I mentioned in the power game, the Cowboys aren't going to like guys that can pull. I will still say this about Big Earl. He's not the best puller. Now, he can move, right? You see him right here pulling around and tackle. He can move. He can turn his hips. He can move a little bit. I think he ran like a, a five flat 40. So not, not bad, right? Um, so he can move. I think he just struggles locating, especially when he's pulling. You can kind of see that there. So to locate those safeties and corners or outside linebackers, you know, he really, if I want to find an area of improvement for him besides just the hand placement, it's going to be at the second level, right? I feel like the second level, climbing up, getting to those linebackers, especially some of those shiftier guys, is where I like to see some of the improvement when it comes to Big Earl. Boom, moving. Eh, didn't punish there. Now here... Even though, like I said, on quote unquote, he's not your particular best run blocking tackle, he plays with a little bit of power. And you'll see that here on the goal line. He's moving there. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving. So he's not really a, a, a earth mover, right? You know what I'm saying? But if he can get low and get leverage, he can definitely knock you off your. There you go. Boom. He can knock you off your block. Good low leverage there. Driving, driving, driving. I feel like sometimes, like, I feel like the hands with him, like I said, once again, it's just the area of improvement because his hands get a little slippery. That's a good base, good drive. And here, see him on a good reach right here. Getting those cheeks to the crowd for a touchdown. Kansas Jayhawks wave the week, Jalen Daniels. That's my guy, man. JD got hurt this year, and I feel like things kind of fell apart, man. I'm excited to see jd back this year with the kansas jayhawks can build off of what they did last year because you know the kansas jayhawks we know them for basketball football not really but things are changing in lawrence let's watch this play one more time for this angle here and that's on will mcdonald again so undrafted guy battling a first round pick or first round guy so boom let's head aside give him a turn Good turn. Still the outside. Good rep right there. There goes JD off to the races. All right. So I feel like another area that he may struggle in is out in space. Now, on this, he's kind of kicking out in space right here. He does a good job locating. I think that's a linebacker out there. Um, but I feel like if you're going to play like a wide nine versus him, and really kind of spread them out and get wide. I feel like there's going to be a lot of opportunity for NFL pass rushers. So, you know, it's just going to be like it's a work in progress. Once again, these are undrafted free agents. Like there's this, they went undrafted for a reason, right? So, a lot of work. But to be honest with you, the Dallas Cowboys they have a lot of guys who's kind of just guys at the offensive line position. So, is Earl going to cut through? I don't know. Now, personally, I'm pulling for him because, like I said, he's a good kid. Um, but honestly, like we said, we broke down TJ Bass. You know, there's a lot of other players who really just haven't gotten their opportunity at the offensive line spot. So he's going to have to really show and prove. But like I said, for the most part, he has a lot of things that you would like besides just the hand size and the length. And he's a very solid pass protector as well. Good lateral movement. Once again. So he's going to be a high quality guy, high IQ guy, but he's going to have to scrap. This is all these, all these undrafted free agents we've been breaking down. I mean, even the Isaiah lands. Um, now, I believe the Cowboys did give him a guaranteed salary. So they put a little extra incentive, incentive in there. So maybe they really like him. But, you know, like I said, he's going to have to fight, going to have to battle because the Cowboys have a lot of youth at the offensive line position. And it's going to be open competition, which I personally like, you know, as far as the depth is concerned. Yeah, I think this is versus MJ Anderson. Boom. Good quality up there. All right, here. Good kick out. Good kick out. Just drove back a little bit. Really wanted to sit, sit and anchor a little bit, but dealing with the bull rush. Like I said, I just think that his biggest 
struggle is just going to be against, you know, just that length because his arm length is kind of small. So not to be able to gauge and his hands are on the outside once again, right? Hands on the outside. Getting drove back. Let's play right here. Just a down block. Loses his balance. So you got to work on your balance. Like I said, the second level, that's going to be an area of improvement for him. Climbing, getting up to linebackers. Like that's where I want to see him improve. Um, also out in space. Like I said, there's a few different things. But like I said, if you just kind of look at a mold of clay of a guy who's an older prospect, who's a high IQ guy, not going to give you any issues. Going to come every day, be blue collar, bring his lunch bell and go to work. That's Earl Bostic Jr. It's going to work. And this last play here, once again, just showing the struggle of getting up to the second level. So that'll be an area of focus. Just climbing. So, so that is it, man. That is Earl Bostic Jr. Offensive tackle out of the University of Kansas. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Undrafted guy. I feel like he's going to have to really show and prove, especially early in camp. And when it comes down to, to camp with these undrafted guys, you know, it really comes down to getting your reps early because, you know, they make those first wave of cups early. You know, so if you're not really getting on the coach's good side out the gate, you could be, uh, you know, cut or released. So but I think the Cowboys might like him a little bit once they kind of get to see a close eye on him. Because like I said, he has a lot of things that I think that Mike Solari will like. It's just that he's going to have to show and prove and earn his keep and earn that star, man. So it's your boy, Jay Tuck. Comment, like, subscribe. Follow me on all social media platforms at jtuck151. Turn on that notification bell so you do not miss out. This is the last undrafted free agent video I'm dropping, but I had to wait for my guy, Earl Bostic. Um, but we got some more film coming up. We got a lot of live shows coming up, so you do not want to miss out. So turn that notification bell so you can stay updated. I want everyone to stay safe, stay blessed, stay encouraged, and go Cowboys. Rock Chalk. Peace.